Hey, this is Professor Bennett from digitalaudiotheory.com. This programming example comes from chapter 9, which covers z-domain transformations. The z in z-domain is simply a variable that is used to represent a complex vector containing magnitude and phase attributes for any frequency up to the Nyquist rate. So, converting to the z-domain means that we can analyze the frequency components and their relative contributions to the signal or system. For digital audio system in the z-domain, we can see how the system will affect the magnitude or phase of any particular frequency uh, within a signal that passes through it. And for a digital audio signal in the z-domain, we can see what frequencies are present within the signal and their relative levels. For this programming example, we will examine a comb filter. Now, these filters are so called because the magnitude response comprising one or more magnitude notches, resembles the shape of a comb in which these frequencies are selectively removed or combed out. A comb filter is constructed by combining an input with a delayed version of itself. That simple. The two parameters here are the amount of delay, which we will denote by k, and the gain or attenuation of the delayed signal, here denoted by a. In the following programming example, we will examine the impact of these two parameters on the magnitude response of a comb filter. So, let's start with A and K equal to 1. We're going to set the sample rate to 48K. Whoops. <laughs> 48K. Then we're going to construct a frequency vector from 0 hertz up to just about the Nyquist. Now, in the textbook, Digital Audio Theory, a Practical Guide, we derive this solution for the magnitude response as a function of frequency, sample rate, and delay. K, oh, and A, the gain, as parameters. Plotting the solution against frequency, let's do that here. So here we're going to plot our magnitude. We're going to take the dB of it. We're going to plot it against frequency. There we have it. We can see a low pass shape. OK. so. This doesn't look like a comb yet. It looks just like a, a low-pass filter. But what would happen if we sweep the k variable? In other words, if we examine a few different ones. So here we're examining k equals 1. But let's look at k equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If we cycle through each of these and plot the corresponding magnitude responses, we'll see something interesting as k increases. We're going to see that as k increases, so too do the number of notches in the comb filter, all of which are evenly spaced. Let's go ahead and do that here. Now, when k is even, there's no cut at Nyquist. But when k is odd, as in the case of k equals 1, we do have a cut at Nyquist. So let's see if we can see a couple of these individually. OK, blue is k equals 1. Red here is k equals 2. Yellow is k equals 3. So we have a cut at a third band and a cut at Nyquist. Purple is k equals 4, a cut at um, a quarter band and a cut at 3 quarters band. And finally, k equals 5 is green. We get three cuts. So you can see as k increases, so do the number of notches. And the spacing between these peaks and notches is also determined by k. It's simply our Nyquist rate over k, fn over k. But let's also examine the impact on sweeping the gain. So here we're going to sweep a from negative 1 up to 1. Let's just stick with the constant k equals 4. 
so that the effects of A will become obvious. And again, we're going to plot it. Uh, we're going to recompute the magnitude response with our new A, and we're going to plot it against our frequency F. So the magnitude of A impacts the depths of the notches. So here we have A equals 1 has the, the biggest, lowest notches, going all the way to negative infinity. If we move up to A equals negative 0.5, we have only a, gain, a, a notch of minus 6 dB. If we move up to A equals 0, this essentially becomes an all-pass filter. Why? Well, we're adding a delayed version, but that delayed version is turned all the way down to 0. So it's not going to impact the signal. Interestingly, uh, when A is negative, the cut and boost frequencies flip-flop. So when we go from uh, positive A, here we have positive A equals 1. Sorry, uh, this one's negative 1, negative 0.5. And then when we flop to positive A, um, A equals 0.5 and A equals 1, we see that boosts become notches and notches become boots, uh, boosts. Sometimes this would be called an inverse comb. OK, so let's use this comb filter for something practical. Clear everything out. We'll go over to our next programming example, 9.3.2. We're going to use a comb filter for the purpose of removing some ground hum. Now, ground hum can be introduced into an audio signal when there are uh, multiple ground nodes within a circuit. And these could potentially contain, well, a potential between them. Uh, we can also introduce ground hum by electromagnetic interference that arises from electrical equipment or lighting. In either case, the symptom is the same, a 120 hertz buzz with strong odd integer harmonics. This type of noise can be addressed with the comb filter, which targets frequencies at specific intervals, just like a harmonic series. So let's assume a sample rate of 48k. And we'll do maximum amount of attenuation, so we'll set A equal to 1. And um, we need to compute the, uh, the digital frequency location of this. So the digital frequency of 120 hertz out of 48k, whoops, not out of 48k, out of uh, 24k, uh, divided by the Nyquist, I'm sorry, is 0 0.00. 5 pi radians. So we want to place a notch at exactly this location, whereby the magnitude or absolute value of h is equal to 0. So substituting into our magnitude response equation uh, for a comb filter, the values of k and f, we solve for k, and we obtain a value of 200. So we would take this equation. We don't know what our k should be originally. Right, so we're trying to solve for this. We know that when f is 120 and fs is 48k and ak equals 1, we want our h mag to be 0. So we set this to 0, this to 1, this to 120, that to 48k, and we solve. And what we will find when we solve that is that k equals 200. When k equals 200, um, then now it's going to produce a cut right at 120 hertz. So next, we implement this ground hum canceling filter in code. So let's do that. We'll plot it against F. Oh, come on. There we go. We can see that we're filtering out 120 hertz. Here it is, right there, and all of its odd harmonics. 
360, 600, 850, and so on. The next video is on designing and implementing notch filters. So until then, thanks for watching.